Hello, we're back again with another amazing session here at the AWS Launchpad here at the floor of the Expo Hall at the New York City Summit. So, Nikki, we've had lots of sessions today, but we've got another really amazing topic Yeah, I hope you guys here. aren't sick of me yet. I mean, I'm sick of me, so. <laughs> it's okay. We have some amazing content. We know you're going to love it. We've got a great guest here, but let's go down the line first. So, you may have seen me before. My name is Nicholas Walsh. I'm a technical evangelist here at AWS, and I help to showcase lots of awesome products and features that folks like Brad here get to build every day. So, I have a really awesome job. Nikki. You do some similar things, right? I do the same thing, Nick. <laughs> Technical evangelist at AWS. Been on Twitch all day. Yeah, so, all right. Man of the hour here. Uh, Brad Lyman, he is a senior manager uh, on, uh, for, PM, for product management on uh, the Marketplace team, if that's correct? Yeah, that's correct. I've been with Marketplace over five years, so I've got to see a lot of the innovations we've built for our buyers so that a builder can find the third-party solutions they need and quickly get it up and running with an AWS. Awesome. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about what Marketplace means in just a second, because yeah. I know not everyone's familiar with it, and it has a lot of different solutions available on it. Uh, but what we're here to talk about today, actually, is the launch of a really cool new feature, uh, and that is the uh, software procurement integration uh, for the AWS Marketplace. So lots to unpack there, but let, let's, let's start from basics, right? Like, what is the AWS Marketplace? Sure. So AWS Marketplace is a curated digital catalog of over 4,800 different software products from over 1,400 different vendors. You can find third-party products that are built to run on AWS, uh, verified with security vulnerabilities, scanned 24-7. They can be deployed within minutes within a variety of AWS services, whether that's EC2, ECS, EKS, SageMaker, Fargate. Um, basically, you can find the solutions you need that are verified to run on AWS quickly and have pay-as-you-go pricing. So you can pay the same way you pay for your infrastructure for AWS for the third-party software solutions that run on top of it. Yeah. Awesome. So when most people think about buying software, they think like, oh, you know, I, I download this, I install yep. it, and then I have a key, and right. then it works, right? Like that's what people think of with traditional software. But on the marketplace here, what it means to buy software is essentially mm -hmm. uh, an application. One click, usually, mm -hmm. right? Or yeah, that, that whole part. You talk about the, uh, the amount of time it takes to download something mm -hmm. and then install it yourself. Like we've made the software as a machine image that already runs on EC2. So you can simply click that you subscribe, agree to the like, term and price and have that running within minutes on EC2 without having to do anything. So you can immediately get up and running and build the solution you need. I love easy things. Wonderful. So that's a great primer on Marketplace and really sets the foundation for talking about the launch today, right? Yeah. So uh, can you walk us through a little bit about the basics of software procurement, kind of like how it was in the world before today's launch, and sure. how our launch is making customers' lives that much better today? Sure. So software procurement is just like anything else you buy at a large organization. You're going to have to say, how much money am I going to spend? Somebody's budget is going to have to pay for that. Like, AWS does that already. But the thing when you buy a third-party product from AWS Marketplace, that was um, a process that didn't fit within everybody's established flow. So with this launch, we're actually supporting those established flows that you have. So it no longer becomes um, something that's unusual for your procurement team to go ahead and approve the spend you're having. So that that same ease of use you get, you have within the controls that your, that your organization wants you to use. Super nice. Yeah, so off the top of my head, that sounds like things are moving faster. They may be easier, just less stress. Uh, if you had to break down really what the biggest value propositions here are, what would you say those are? Sure. So you can do all the things that you find, buy, and deploy for Marketplace, but then you have the, the governance that you need, the same way you would want security and visibility mm -hmm. to be able to know mm -hmm. when you've bought something and when actions are taken. Uh, you can get that out of this tool. So you can basically say, well, the same way I could use uh, CloudWatch or CloudTrail to see when actions are taken, I could use uh, procurement system integrations to see when a software is purchased, uh, who approved it, why you're using it, what the purpose of that is, so that you have that holistic piece of why you're using software within AWS. Awesome. So uh, there's kind of two customers that come to mind here. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are already using the marketplace mm -hmm. and already have to go through these manual procurement processes. Mm -hmm. Um, or the ones that may not have used it quite yet, right? Yeah. So uh, what does it look like to start using this integration for procurement? Sure, so it's super simple. We've heard from customers already that they were able to set this up in less than five minutes. All you have to do is provide your endpoint link that you use for your procurement system. We'll be talking about Coupa today. When we launched this at Reinforce last, uh, two weeks ago, we actually were able to have 
Coupa launch it same day that they add to support wow. at their own customer conference. And so we talked about how you can actually go within that tool, set it up, provide your credentials that you use within Coupa, uh, link to your endpoint within AWS Marketplace, and then immediately all the purchases you make will be actually set, submit for approval rather than a direct subscription. And then once they're approved, you can then one click to deploy. And then you can or... one click. And so we actually, we intercept that action of what they're going to do and submit for approval. And then that whole workflow that you would go through of agreeing to terms and then going to configure and then ultimately deploying, we skip. pause that. We pause that while we wait you wait for that approval to come in. So you know you're never taking an action that isn't approved by your organization. Got it, but then once you've gotten that approval, you get right back into Yeah, you can get immediately back into AWS and start building the software you need. Awesome, well, I mean, I'm excited to see it in action. I, I heard you have a little demo for us. I do, I've set up a little bit of demo to show. We can um, bounce it over and take a look. How were so, customers previously doing this um, if they had developers that wanted to use third-party software in the marketplace asking so, for approval, just like Yeah, so it's the same way manually? you would do. Yeah, they would basically say um, not as many uh, users would get access to AWS Marketplace, you would basically say like you would have- A very limited, so now you've broadened it, you opened it up so every the number of people that organization you can expose now to. has Marketplace access and can be requesting. Yeah, we go ahead, we think about the who can subscribe, the what, what you can subscribe to, and this is actually the when you subscribe. So you can mm -hmm. say, now is the time when you can subscribe because I know everything you're doing about this software. Yeah, you're also just giving more freedom to the developers that are actually building to be able to say what they need. Yeah, and exactly. When they need it. We've thought about like speed of the building, and then governance goes hand in hand. So when we think about the security piece, the shared security model, that governance that you have to have within your organization, like this gives your governance to what you're buying. The same way AWS Identity and Access Management gives governance about what you would actually do with an AWS. Sweet. So let's get into the demo. Yeah, let's get into the demo. So. This is Coupa, the, the first procurement tool. It's a native AWS built solution. It's uh, born in the cloud, SaaS, running on AWS. Uh, they integrated with us. I'm going to go ahead. Um, you can see a couple things. First, you can see that I have a couple bricks in black that would take me directly to AWS Marketplace. That's called a punch out flow. I'm going to actually go ahead and search, though, because one thing you can do, you can actually search directly for software within, uh, within Coupa. So I walked past Datadog, they're a platinum sponsor when I came over to get uh, to be a part of this demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with them. You can see that I can actually see all the solutions available from AWS Marketplace from Datadog. I can go ahead and get a summary of what I could be thinking about. I'm gonna go ahead and visit store and that's gonna start a session within AWS Marketplace. You can see I'm getting your session ready and now I can go ahead and browse the AWS Marketplace the same way I would. I can see the pricing, the usage instructions, everything I know to get started on this. I'm going to show you a little bit of that Datadog, uh, the search experience within Marketplace itself, mm -hmm. because you could also have started directly from Marketplace if you went through a punch out flow. So I'm going to go ahead, use some of our filtering. I'm going to ask, go with containers. So at reInvent last year, we launched containers as a new category. So I'm going to highlight the containers products we have within AWS Marketplace. Go ahead and click on one of them. Datadog Pro Container Agent. You can okay. see. Again, before we mentioned that yeah. like some of these applications uh, deploy to EC2, right? Which are yeah, they can deploy, servers. Yeah, they can deploy to EC2. They're going to deploy to uh, ECS, EKS, uh, SageMaker. So yeah, there's a variety of different services that we support. I'm going to go ahead and um, so you can see, I can see everything about this product. I continue to subscribe. So up here in the upper right, I can see that continue to configure is actually blocked because we're going to ask you to go through the flow of submit for approval. I'm going to go ahead and hit that submit for approval flow, it's redirecting me back to my procurement platform at that point. Wow. And so this will push me into Coupa, which will have a, a cart view where I can actually see what I'm buying. So some of the things I can do here, I can say uh, the business unit, I'm gonna buy it for IT. I can say I'm gonna do my Launchpad Twitch demo as my business purpose for making this purchase. I like it. I can go ahead and, and uh, enter some additional information. Like, I can say what project I'm buying this for. I'm going to do an ERP upgrade. I can select which account I want to use it for. So essentially, you're one-stop shop for all of the details yeah. for filing this, this purchase request, essentially, And so right? before this, this would be something you'd have to follow up about why you're making this purchase. You know, when you got, a, when you got your AWS bill, people would say, well, why'd you buy this? And you'd have to go through that process. You can go ahead and do it's that whole process. It's all integrated now. It starts from the very beginning. So the other thing is, a lot of times when you take an action, you want to make sure that the right approval flow goes through. So a typical approval flow could be someone in legal, someone in procurement, and your security uh, CISO or someone from their office. Offsec, yeah. So they know exactly, like, 
this follows our standards, this is what we want to see. Um, so we actually go ahead and we pre-populate an approval flow. So you can basically say, because this is coming from Marketplace, I want to have a certain approval flow. You could say, because above a certain threshold, it's, it has a different approval flow. So it basically gives you that flexibility. I could even go and add additional approvers if I want to say that, no, this is a special, this is a special purchase that's going to go ahead and um, that's going to need, and you know, I want someone else's eyes on this because I know it's going to be an important part of our strategy. And ultimately, it's just an approval pipeline, right? Like you can yeah. set conditionals based on exactly. uh, maybe your direct, like, uh, direct manager. You have the ones that everyone will have to go through, like your OPSEC team and so on exactly. and so forth. Exactly, exactly. So you can pre-configure those or you can make special, uh, special on an ad hoc basis. The other thing I wanted to call it here is that we go ahead and create a purchase order. So what before you would kind of have to go and max this up with what the budget you're coming from, here we actually do an estimation. So one of the great things about AWS is that it's all pay-as-you-go pricing. So with pay-as-you-go pricing, you only pay for what you use. Yep. But that makes it really hard to estimate how much you're going to actually spend totally. within your application. So we go ahead and we take a guess of what it's going to be so that you can have a starting place for as your deployments grow, you can go and make a modification there, but you at least have a base there. And so we plan to iterate on that with additional cost estimation tools and other ways for you to kind of understand what you're going to be spending, even in this pay-as-you-go environment. And, and so just so that people get an idea of uh, what this baseline is, yeah. uh, again, you take a pay-as-you-go rate for cost mm -hmm. per time, and then this estimate is, I guess, based on a some... A 12-month hourly usage of that. Okay. For hourly for 12 months, what would it be? And so you can make a modification on there, but we're going to go ahead and use a base of $10,000 as the estimate for this product. Great. So once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and submit for approval. And so that's going to go ahead and kick off the workflow. So the approver that we've set up will get an email within Coupa. They can take an action to approve that, ask for more information. Um, it really lets them kind of say the same way you would want any kind of approval before you take an action that's going to have um, that's going to have an effect on your account. You can now set that up and have visibility into that. So, some of the other things that we have within here is we actually have invoices. So after this purchase is approved, it's going to send something back within AWS to kick off that flow. So Nikki, you can go ahead and do that one-click deployment at that time. That's what I like to hear. And then we're going to go ahead and send you an email confirmation and an invoice. So I can actually see all the invoices that AWS has already sent into this flow. So I have a central view of seeing where my invoices are, when they've been paid, and what they're for. So I can click through, I can see for this product, this was a purchase we did as we were doing some of our earlier demos. And so this was for a WordPress with Let's Encrypt. So you can actually find that product in Marketplace, buy it, and get it up and running. And then as your invoice comes in, we spent a whopping $4.74 on this product. You can now see that the invoice has been delivered and is available for you to see in a consolidated view. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like uh, in, in cloud computing, you kind of have two major trends, right? You have yeah. uh, the, the uh, decoupling of things that shouldn't be uh, together so that you can scale them selectively. And then in other instances like this, you're essentially taking two processes that always have to occur with one another the yeah. actual uh, request for purchase, and then the entire procurement order, which typically lives on another third-party site like Coupa. Um, but it's, it's one closed loop, right? Exactly. So this integration is essentially allowing that to become one more seamless process. Yeah, exactly. This goes ahead and lets you um, take all the things you want to do, um, and it lets your those governance arms that want to control and make sure that you're doing the right actions, it gives them that visibility so that they can be more comfortable with letting you do what you want so that builders can build as quickly as they want because we have that way to actually see all the pieces that are coming okay, together. Okay, so if you were the boss of you though, which, if you approved that, now what would show up in your AWS account? What would show up in my AWS yeah, account? Yeah, that button would suddenly be enabled so, and then Yeah, let me show you so I can go ahead and see all the software that I actually requested. already have that I've requested previously. It's a little bit like a, a cooking show where I go ahead and say, I've set up some things ahead of time. So if I were to go continue, I can see that I've already accepted the this terms approved, here. So, you can continue. so I can go ahead and go directly in order to configure the software. I can select what image I want, what region I want it to go to, and if I were to click continue to launch, click to launch, it would bounce me into the EC2 console and I could go ahead and get started taking actions Super there. Cool. So yeah, it really lets you take that step and um, you know, there's somebody here who got an email today and so if they're seeing that email, they could click approve at any time and then at that point, we would be able to click buy and deploy that software like right in front of you.
Yeah. That's awesome. And so essentially, like we we spoke before about governance and agility, right? Yeah. And I think like this is something we typically refer to or consider as a trade-off, right? Like the tighter yeah. we make restrictions, the slower we can move, and the harder it becomes for devs to do dev work. And now this is rejects all of that and says like we want to give devs the experience they want, but then also allow for governance in a way that abides by that workflow. Exactly. We've heard from customers time and time again that as they move more and more workloads to AWS, they kind of see that as. Um, I need the control and governance I get over these things. Like they have things like regulated workloads that they brought here mm -hmm. that like require them to see, hey, who's buying, what are they buying, and why do they buy? And so we heard from customers that this is what they want. Approvals will also happen much faster now oh, yeah. this way. Yeah, you can think about like any kind of offline process that you're having to manage, like as an email or as a phone call or anything. Or just doing the data entry of like looking at it on AWS and then actually making an invoice for it and all that stuff. Exactly, like purchase orders are a big thing within a lot of organizations that allows you to know what you've actually bought and track it back so that you, know, you don't have that um, spend that's unexpected and you know that you're, you're operating within the budget that you wanted. So we yeah, actually support that. Yeah, less human error too. Yeah, exactly. So we just, you know, we heard time and time again that these kind of tools were going to be required as we move to bigger and bigger workloads on AWS. So uh, super excited to get this in the hand of the customers. Like we'll be talking about it more with customers later today. Like, very great that we're able to highlight this to the Twitch users as well. Super excited to share this story. Yeah, no, I'm excited to see it. And so with respect to the approver process, and I don't know if this is new with CD integration or if this is how uh, it works in the wild. Mm -hmm. uh, for the approver, how does that typically look like? Do they get like a text message notification? Do they get an email? Do they have the signs of the console? They get an email. Okay. So like, and but that's something you can. Can they click a button directly from their email to approve? Yeah, they can directly click an email from the. So I mean, that's something that. It was um, important. I needed yeah, to. Yeah, no, it's important. You need to know that you can make it as easy as just to click in an email. But yeah, but that's something that the way we've built this integration is just a flow of CXML coming back and forth. So that's XML built for commerce. It's an open standard that actually over 80 different companies support. And so Amazon Business um, has done a similar set of integrations. And so you know, the way you can buy staplers and pencils from Amazon Business, you can buy all the software you need for your enterprise now within AWS Marketplace, within a procurement system of your choice. That, that's really awesome. We actually have a little bit of time here at the end. So uh, like CXML sounds like a really interesting concept. What was the biggest reason why that came about? Like, How did we arrive sure. at that standard? I know this. Oh, well, I'm yeah, not asking no. to be an XML historian no, here. No, so but. I mean, the, the standard arose because you have, um, you have a lot of different systems and a lot of different catalogs that needed to communicate with each other. So there was an open standard that was uh, developed so that you could go ahead and say, here's how I'm going to define items, here's how I'm going to define quantities, here's how I'm going to define purchase orders. So there was this standard that multiple um, organizations and multiple different uh, catalogs. So you can actually pull in different catalogs using CXML. It's been widely adopted by a number of different um, a number of different services. So one of the things that we're excited to keep building for customers over the next year is all the different tools that we know can work with XML, like everything that supports XML, we can now go ahead and give our customers that access to tools because we're totally about customer choice and their flexibility to use the tool that they want for the job that they need. Awesome, yeah. I mean. I, I feel like most standards and specifications usually come about from technical demand, so it's mm -hmm. really interesting to see a flavor of a specification arise from the intersection of like subject matter, in this case commerce, and a yeah. consist, and you, like, consistent set of problems, and like the technical requirements. Totally, and this is something that um, is really difficult to think about within the, world of, um, within the world of cloud computing. Actually, the closest thing we were able to find were like party rental supplies before, because it's something that's paid for by the hour, <laughs> and so we were thinking about party rentals and how we could apply that logic to really software in the cloud. And so you know, we were actually, you know, we, we haven't found anyone else in the cloud world that's been able to actually do this kind of purchase order matching and integrate with a third party tool like this. So we're super excited to keep innovating. We have a team that's been building really on this, awesome. and we're going to keep taking customer feedback to keep moving forward on this. Awesome. Well, I think you heard it here first then, uh, AWS Marketplace, the first to have a direct software procurement uh, integration, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, unless we have any questions from the chat, I think uh, that's going to about do it for us here uh, for this session. Uh, we'll be back with more content soon, though. Yeah, Thanks thank so much. Thank you again, Brad. It's been a ton awesome. of fun. Thanks thank you so, so much. much. Thank you so much. All right, stick around. We'll have more sessions shortly.